Welcome to Mandela, Struggle for Freedom. In this four-part series, we will be exploring that struggle for freedom. Racism and discrimination have been and still are a global issue. A powerful historical example of this is found in South Africa with the apartheid system. In 1948, the existing South African government began creating the apartheid laws. Simply put, these laws legislated many of the already existing race-based ideas and added to many already discriminatory rules. Many South Africans had fought back against the racism forming organizations starting in the 1900s. These groups would continue their work against the apartheid system. In 1950, the South African government required everyone in the country to register as white, colored, which was mixed or Asian, and Bantu, which was African black people. This new legislation was then used to create more segregated public spaces. And it was this legislation which sparked what became known as the Defiance Campaign. Now, the Defiance Campaign consisted of mass action and tactics of boycotts, strikes, and civil disobedience. These actions were large-scale and non-violent resistances targeting some of the most discriminatory rules. What's also interesting is this was the first time that South Africans from all backgrounds and skin colors worked together to protest the government. Some of these defiant acts included being out after curfew, blacks and coloreds marching into white-only areas, using white-only entranceways, and sitting on white-only benches in public. Police response to these acts included arrests, fines, and short stays in prison, just to mention a few. The movement grew rapidly, with police arresting 146 people in the month of June in 1952. By the end of 1952, a total of 8,057 people were arrested, making this the largest organized resistance in South African history at that time. In spite of this, none of the laws were changed. However, as a result of the Defiance Campaign, the United Nations announced that the racial policies in South Africa were an international issue which required an investigation. Peaceful protests continued in South Africa. In 1960, black African leaders declared it the year of the past, meaning that protesters would act against the past system. This was a system which required black Africans to carry a pass while in white-only areas. This series of coordinated peaceful protests had black Africans leave their passes at home, walk to the police station where they would be arrested. This would cause the jails to swell and the economy to slow. On the morning of March 21st, the people of Cape Town, Sharpsville, and Petrolia, among others, would wake up, gather, and walk to the police stations without their passbooks. However, when a large group gathered in Sharpeville and walked towards the police station singing freedom songs and chanting things like our land and down with passes, the police were waiting, lined up outside the police station, ready to block the protesters. The protesters announced that they were there to turn themselves in for not having their passbooks with them. The mood of the crowd was described as being more festive than belligerent, and a small scuffle occurred near the entrance to the station, causing some of the crowd to move forward. This caused the police who were already on edge to panic, and one officer fired into the crowd. Other officers opened fire as the protesters ran away in fear, and in less than two minutes of gunfire, 69 people were dead and 180 seriously injured, many of whom were shot from behind as they fled. What black African leaders had planned as a peaceful protest for basic human rights had turned violent, and this incident became known as the Sharpeville Massacre. Sharpsville was the spark that saw an increase in race-based violence between police and protesters. None of the peaceful actions from the 1950s and into the 1960s had created positive change for black and colored South Africans. The peaceful efforts were not enough to sway the dominant white minority to change their systemically racist policies. So you might wonder what was next for the protesters. Well, Check out our next installment of Mandela, Struggle for Freedom, History and Focus to find out.